All right, so we just got done prepping all of our brass. It's all ready to go for reloading. So in order to do reloading, your most valuable tools that you're gonna use out of everything you see here, I would say would be your little data book. I keep two on hand and I also use an online source. It's always good to have multiple sources to go to for reloading. And I don't care if you think you're the world's greatest reloader, you, these are a must. You have to have these. None of this here will work without your recipe books. You have to have your recipe books. These books are like the Bible for reloading. Without these books, the rest of this is useless. So components that you're gonna be using are primers. Now there are, this is gonna be calling for large pistol primers is what I'm gonna be doing it for, for doing these. And these are 45 Colt. Uh, 45 ACP can use small or large pistol primers. Now you also have two different types of primers that I know of, and those are the standard primers and magnum primers. And I'm gonna be the first to say that in what I've found, it doesn't really matter if you do standard or magnum primers, because this is just doing cowboy action shooting, it's just cowboy loads. It doesn't really matter. Both loads will work just as good. I get about the same reaction out of both. The only way you can truly tell the difference between the two is if you hook up a chronometer and then you go through and you uh, um, go and you measure the speed and everything and then you can actually use that with a chronometer and you'd be able to find out how your speeds, your velocity and everything are with your primers. The other thing is, is you're gonna use your powder. So for cowboy loads, I'm gonna be using two, three, one ball powder. This is smokeless powder. So this is Winchester. This is a pretty good powder. It works pretty efficiently. It works pretty good. Uh, the only thing I can say is it does make my guns dirty. So I have to constantly clean my guns with this. Uh, but I haven't had a lot of bad problems with it. It's been working pretty well so far. And another thing you're going to want is you're going to want a scale. I just use this right here, uh, $25, $30, $40. It's worth getting the scale. You need the scale. I mean, you have to be able to weigh everything. And you got to make sure it weighs out in grains. I have, there's two different options. You can use a dial scale or you can use a digital. I go with digital. I think they're it's easier to read. Accuracy on them, about the same but maybe you can get maybe a little bit more accurate on a digital scale. The other stuff that you're probably gonna want, I mean, other than the fact that your uh, shell cases are all lubricated, you got your powder, you're gonna need a place to store your shells in once you go through, and then you're gonna need bullets. So I go online and I order my bullets, and it will let you know like how many grain bullets you have, what they're for. So it's really good to make sure you get the right bullets for what you're doing get the right weights so you can calibrate it to your recipe book to what recipe you have to run for your powders so we're going to go get this thing hooked up and because of the, the press i'm using i do this in three separate stages and what i do is i first i go through and i prime my i prime everything and i weigh everything i prime everything and then i size the inside for the bullets to go in. Then I go through and I put the powder in it. I have all the powder all ready to go. So they're all set with the powder, the amount of powder that they need. So I have the proper charge. And I put the bullets on top so they're all ready to go. I pick up the bullets, I put them in the primer, and they just start getting done. And they go through and it compresses the bullet in, the size it, it's all good to go. And the last tool that you're going to need is you're going to need a way to measure the diameter of your, your shell case and your bullet and everything. So you're going to need a chronometer set. This is like one of the best tools. I mean, you have to have these because when you're putting your bullets in, your seat and everything, you got to know if you have the right length. Cowboy loads, I do check it consistently, make sure it's running good but it's not as critical on cowboy loads than it is if you're doing um, more rifle loads. The other thing, like I mentioned before, I'm not gonna be trimming any brass. 
I mean, I like beveled the inside and outside. So this are all good to go. They're ready for reloading. So there's no reason for me to do any trimming. At least for pistol rounds, 45 Colt, 45 ACP, 9 millimeter. Uh, I don't really need to worry about trimming. But if I'm doing like more of like rifle loads or I try to send it way out there, then I'd be going through and making sure the trimming and everything is uh, right on the money. But details are where all this is. So that's where your accuracy is. Because I'm only doing these for cowboy loads, this is not as crucial for trying to reach out 100 to 1,000 yards trying to touch the target. I'm only trying to reach out about 15, 20 yards to touch the target. That's it. That's all I'm doing with these. I'm not doing anything more. That's why I keep my loads a little bit light and I don't have to load as much. Also, when you load them a little bit lighter, it also saves me money on powder. Not a lot, but it saves me some. This stuff's pretty pricey to buy, to get into, so it does make it a little bit cheaper. So we're gonna get to loading. We're gonna get this thing going. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step on how I do this. All right, so now what we gotta do is we gotta get our primers loaded in our device so that way it's ready to go. So we're gonna open this up. So that's all open. Now I have my primers right here. These are uh, large pistol primers. I have a hundred right here in a set. So you just open them up real easy. I go about that much. You don't have to go anymore. And what I do is I open this straight up. You put them in just like this. You gotta be very easy because they will pop out and they'll scatter and explode everywhere. So you turn them upside down, just like that. There we go. And then you have some that are mismatched, so we just shake them and they'll spit, they'll turn on their own. And then you just go through, you just go through, you can turn them over and make sure they're all good to go. So we have a few here that didn't turn. And they're very tiny. They're not very big components. Now what primers do is they create a minor explosion inside the cartridge. So that way it will ignite the powder and then push out the bullet. So that's how the primers work. So we're just gonna go through, and it's gonna go through, and you just put this put on this little bit so it locks. The reason is, is so that way when you turn them, they don't spill out. Once I push it all the way up, then they will go through and they will start coming out. So you have this device right here. You're gonna go through and you're gonna put this just like this. You're just gonna put that on. And that's just gonna slide right on there without, it goes on pretty easy. It's not real hard. And it looks like there's a few primers in there already. So we're just gonna set it like this. There we go. Now we're gonna go through and we're gonna get this going. And then now that we have this up and going, now we're gonna go through and get the rest of it up. So you have to take this device right here. We're gonna put that in right there. So this is gonna come up. You're gonna deposit the primer, and then you're gonna go through, and you're gonna push this in the rest of the way. It's not wanting to go in, so we're gonna go through. Let's try that again. There we go. Now, you gotta push this little device up, and I get a little shake. There we go. Now they're all set and ready to go. You have your primer set in here. Now, we're gonna take some shell casings and we're going to fill up our little container right here. I also have a sample bullet. It, all the bullets are going to be pretty much the same diameter but there's going to be different gray bullets. You have 160 grain, you have 200 grain, you have 225 grain, 235, you have 240, 250 grain. It really depends on what you're wanting to shoot. Most of what I do is about 200 grains to 220 grains is about what I do. I don't really need any more. So I kind of stay in the 200 grain margin. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna put the, sh the shell cartridge in 
we're gonna bring it in. Sits right there. Now we're gonna come up. It's gonna size it. So we have our sizing die in here. It's already preset. So you're gonna go through, you're gonna put it in. Now I'm gonna come back down and I'm gonna pull it out. We're gonna look at the sizing, make sure it's good. And it sizes it out pretty good, so it's gonna work. It's gonna, it's gonna go exactly the way I want it to go. You don't wanna open it up too much. You don't want it to be where it will not work or otherwise this will happen. And you could actually crimp and you could destroy brass real easy. When I first started doing this, I was afraid of overexpanding it and this is what happened. Sometimes when you're trying to find the right sizes, this can happen. So we try to avoid little mistakes like that. So now we're gonna put this back in here. And then we're gonna go up and then we're gonna go back over. So when you go over, you're actually gonna, I like to hold my hand here to brace it because I don't have weight down there. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in really good. So I'm gonna make sure it goes in, it seeds that primer in. There we go. Now the primer's in. All right, now we're gonna look at it and there we go. Our primer is in. It's set and ready to go. The other thing that's really important to know about primers, you don't want them to what you want them to wear. You can take your finger, you run right across. It's nice and smooth. You don't want them too deep. So you don't want to crush that primer in and you don't want them sticking out. I went to a match one time where I was competition shooting and I had a primer that wasn't seated far, far enough in. And when the revolver was going in, it got stuck. I had to literally stop the whole thing. I had to set my gun down and I couldn't go any further in the match. And I had a bunch of misfires because of that. And that really sucks. So that's why we make sure. A uh, good practice that I've done is sometimes after I do these, I'll actually load them up all the way and I'll spin them, make sure it's spinning. And if I see it spinning and it's spinning good, that's a good way to know that they're seated properly. So we're gonna go ahead and do one more. And then we have to go through and do the whole thing. So what I do is I come all the way up. I drop the cartridge in. I load the primer. So you push this against your little handle right here. You're going to push it in. You're going to push it in. You little button, your little lever you push. So when you do that, it's going to load your primer up. So if you look right there, your primer's all loaded. The old-fashioned way is you would actually have one of these on a single press. It was on the bottom. And you had to manually put it in there which was very tedious and very detailed and very hard to do. So we're gonna put that back in and that just sits in there. So you're just gonna go back down and you're gonna go through and it's gonna go right there. Now we're gonna go back up. We're gonna size it. So it's right about there is where you wanna size it and it's gonna come back down. You're gonna put seed your primer. There we go. Come back up. Put another cartridge in, pop another primer in, go in, go up, and you just keep on doing the same process. And you just keep on repeating and doing the same thing over and over, and it should work. What I do is every five, I like to check and make sure that everything is properly going good and everything, make sure everything's all smooth, and I like to check and make sure the bolts are seating properly, because Everything can shift on you. Things do shift. So there we go. Now we're gonna go back up. Go do it again. Pop that in. Pop the primer in. And we do it again. And there we go. That is how I size and prime my whole setup. The reason why I do it this way, instead of trying to do it all at the same time, is because of the type of press I have. Yes, it's capable of doing multiple things at once but I prefer to manually load my powder and do it that way instead of having a powder die on here and feeding the primer and then putting the bolts in. Yes, I could do that and do it all at once, but because I want to make sure I check everything to the details and make sure I do that, I get a lot better consistency with my powders and making sure I keep my powders at the level I want them to be at because if there's anything here that is very crucial is making sure your powder is at its proper level. Because it, you don't want to go too hot, you don't want to go too cold, you want it right in the middle. 
I think of it as like the Goldilocks theory. You don't want it too cold, you don't want it too hot, you want it just right. That's kind of how I think of it. And I know it sounds kind of corny, but it's a good habit, a good exercise to get into. As I always say, and as a gunsmith that told me once, none of this is rocket science, but you want to treat it like it's rocket science. It's very crucial that you look at this as if it's rocket science, even though it's not rocket science. It is simple to learn, it is easy, and it is fun to do. I kind of find it therapeutic to sit here for hours doing this, but this does help a lot. So we're going to get about a thousand of these done, and then we're going to go to the next step. Okay, now that we have our cartridges all ready to go, and all we have to do is find the measurement. Now we know that the bullets are going to fit in the cartridge. Everything is the primers are seated and ready to go. Now the next step for this is to find our powder measurement. And it's really not that hard. Um, so what I do is I use loaddata.com and it you just plug in the numbers and it gives you everything and it's all set. But as a reference, I don't just solely rely on that. I actually will match those to what's in the book and that's what helps me find what my weights are. So that way it gives me, so I can go for a second reference. It's always better to have a second reference, always better to make sure you get it right the first time than have a devastating mistake the second time. I am gonna let anybody know, anybody who's starting out reloading, you're gonna make minor mistakes as you go, but it's a learning process. It's just hopefully it's not a costly process. You gotta make sure you get everything to the T perfect, especially on the powders. And what I do is I make sure I have everything written down on my sheet of paper and I'll bolt it up on the wall. That way it's right there because I wanna make sure I'm getting all this right. I actually have a log book somewhere else with all my powder weights and everything I'm using. So what we're doing, and I'm gonna explain what all this is so you have a, a detailed idea of what we're doing. So we're running this powder right here, which is Winchester. 2.3 ball powder. It's a smokeless powder. And like I said, it does run dirty. So we got our numbers and everything right here. So I'm gonna explain it. So we're gonna run 45 Colt, which that's what this is right here. It's 45 Colt. This is a, a load ready to go. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna measure out 16. And we're gonna to wanna to know how much 16 is. That's the whole thing is what you gotta measure it out to. So we're going to get our chronometers out and we're going to go through and get a measurement so that way we can make sure we have a, the money. This just helps me know what's going on. All right, now we have our chronometers out and what we're going to do is we have it at zero. So it's zeroed out. So I'm going to bring it back and we're going to have it at 1600. Or 16,000 is what it's got to be at. We're gonna set it here. And right there. So it's just shy of 16,000. So it's pretty close, but that's pretty dang close. Right now it's at, uh, it's sitting just, uh, just under 16. So this is gonna work, this will be okay. I mean, not everything is exactly perfect, but you want to try to get it within that range. Now, you have RNFP. So that is what this bullet is right here. And the definition to that is it's a round nose flat point. And right here, so it's RNFP, 200 grains. And then this is a powder that I'm writing at Winchester, two, three, Ball powder, ball powder, and right down here is our loads. So what these numbers are right here is the PR is my pressure. So that's how much pressure it is at 5.9 as a low, and it's 13, 13,800 uh, pounds of pressure when you're writing at eight. So eight is very hot. That is high. I'm gonna do everything I can to stay away from eight. You do not wanna be at eight. There's no reason to run this at that level. So, 
at 5.9, I'm gonna have a load between 5.9 and 6.4. So I'm gonna set it up for right in the middle there. So I'm gonna probably set this up at 6.2. 6.2 is probably where we're gonna be sitting at. I, I don't see any reason why I should go any colder or any hotter. That's right in the low end. That's about right for the cowboy load. So we're gonna have, we're gonna set our powder for 6.2. So we got our powder measure right here. We got our scale right here. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our powder measure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. We're gonna take all of our powder that we have right here and I literally open the whole thing and we're just gonna dump it all inside here. And just let it all run in there. So that's probably good right there. So that's a good load of powder right there. Now to find the measurement, I actually have to use this dial right here to find the measurement. So we're gonna go and get this going so you can see the measurement. We're just gonna set the camera up a little bit closer so you can see what we're doing. All right, now we have this all set up. We're gonna go through and this is how I do the powder. We pour it inside here. Make sure nothing's inside here, make sure it's all clear. I put this on my scale. We're gonna zero my scale, make sure that's zeroed. Now, I'm gonna turn this dial just a little bit to the right. We're gonna drop some powder in. We're gonna go and weigh it. Okay, so it says four seven. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna turn it to the left because we found the right was too far. So we got a little bit to the left. Okay, so we're gonna measure that. All right, so that's five nine. So that's on the lowest setting of the cold. So we're gonna bring this up just a little bit more, just a, just a little bit, there we go. We're gonna see what that is. All right, that says five eight, five seven. So it's five seven, so we're gonna do it one more time. We're just gonna give it a little bit of a turn. There we go. So that's five nine. So this is the harder part is like trying to find that one measurement. This is why I have this particular powder scale and this particular uh, powder feeder because that way I can get the measurements that I want. So we're still sitting at five nine. So we just gotta turn it up just a little bit. All right, so that's at six two. So I believe that's gonna work. That's six two. So since I have it between 5.9 and 6.4, that's at 6.2. So if anything, maybe I could drop it down a little, but I think 6.2 is right at the right range. So now we have it at the right range of what we want to be at. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do our charge now. All right, now this is what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go over, we're gonna put a load on. So. First things first, you want to put your dye on for the crimping and, and then what that does is it pushes a bullet in and it will crimp it into place. So first things first, we're going to go through, we're going to chuck our load. There's two ways you can do it. One, I could put a shell case on here, I could zero it, or I could just put this thing on. I put pour the powder inside our little measuring scooper and it says that it's at 6.2. So I'm gonna drop that back in there. And I usually check these every five loads. So I do five, and I check it. Do five, do check it. Because this could change on you at any time. So now we have our load ready. Now I'm gonna go and get a bullet. So we have our bullet, and I'm just gonna set the bullet right on there. And you see it sits right on there without a problem. Just goes right on, and then I'm gonna go through it just kind of sits snug on there. And that's gonna push that right in where it's supposed to go. Now that it's in there, now we're gonna bring it up and it's gonna load and do the process just like we were doing before. So what I do is I go very easy. I don't try to rush it. I just try to take it easy. If you go too fast, you can damage your cartridges, you can mess things up. You may not get what you want and the results. So we're gonna go look at it. 
And right there we have a nice good crimp. I'm gonna go and just go a little bit more on the crimp. But otherwise I think it's pretty good. Okay, there we go. And there we go. So that's crimped on there, it looks good. It's gonna work for me. That is a good cowboy load. That's gonna do the job that I need to do. That's gonna be able to shoot and be able to have a nice accurate shoot in the plates I'm shooting. So we're gonna go ahead and do one more. And then we're gonna start setting this up. And we're gonna get our bolts up here. We're gonna set these up. And we're gonna do a few of these. So I'm gonna go through, put my load in, get my bullet. I'm gonna put this in here. And you're gonna see the progressive side of this kind of go because my cousin, he actually worked on a single stage press. And one night he would do 50 rounds. I called him up, I said, why don't you go get a good press? Put the money in since you know what you're doing. Get a good press and actually get something nice. So he went and broke down and bought a Dylan. And now he does reloading and he did like a thousand in one night, which he was pretty amazed on how much he was able to do. I'm going to go get another one here. Put that shell casing in there. Put the, car, the projectile inside there so it's all ready to go. And this is how I do my reloading. There's, I want to say there's no wrong way of doing this as long as you follow the principles. As long as you go exactly what you're supposed to do and do what you're supposed to do. As long as you're not taking shortcuts and doing anything you're not supposed to do, there's no reason why this should not work. Now, say that you're reloading and you double charge it. You double charge it, you're gonna take a chance of your gun blowing up. And what I generally do is I line all my shell cases out on here. And I do rows and I just go through and just Go all the way down, do the next one all the way down. That's how, and I go and look at them. I do an examination, make sure I run a light on, make sure they're not, they're all evenly charged. That's a good way to make sure you can visually do a check, an examination to make sure nothing's double charged. The other thing you wanna make sure you do, because you're handling lead, lead is not exactly good for you. So you wanna wash your hands after you're done doing this because Lead is getting into your hands and you don't really want that. So we're going to do one more and then we're going to probably go through and I got about a thousand of these to do and then I'll probably have them all done tonight. All right, set that in. There we go. Put that in. There we go. And there we go. We got all our stuff done. There's our projectile. It's a nice seated primer. The bullet's seated in well. It's got a good crimp on it. This is going to run very smooth through my gun. And there we go. That is the process of reloading, doing all this, and it's not really that hard to do, like I said. This is not rocket science. It's pretty easy to learn, but if you don't do this right and you make mistakes, you're going to has some really bad results. And the last thing you want, I mean, you're gonna have issues where you may overseed a primer, you may overseed a bullet. And generally what I do, I pull them out. Here's a good example. I did this one time, I pushed that bullet all the way in. It's got a good primer set, but what happened is they just pushed all the way in, so I gotta go through and I gotta get a bullet puller, I gotta pull the bullet out, and then I gotta redo it all over again. So things do happen, mistakes do happen. But this is why we go through this process and make sure everything's running smooth, everything's looking good, because we don't want too many mistakes. So I'm gonna get back to work. I'm gonna get these all loaded and get these all done. And you guys have a great day, be happy shooting, and be safe.
Got to move this or it will uh, grande. Stand by. Other side, other side.